Are you bored, overwhelmed, or just sick of not using your bags in your large handbag collection? Yeah, really? So find out in this video what the perfect number of bags is for you. At the moment, I'm at 23, down from 37, and still reducing, so stick around. and welcome back. Yes, today we are going to take a deep dive into the downfalls of having a large handbag collection, no less. Before that, I want to say a big hello to Kelly Allen, 8702, my shout out for today. And big warning, there's a lot of coffee on board. Now, my perfume of the day, I can't wait to tell you this because I am so excited. You know I love my perfumes. You know I buy all my perfumes myself. Me, myself and I. Well, Ladies and gents, I was actually gifted this and I cannot believe it. Stories Perfumes, I don't know if you've heard of them. This is their little card here. And this is not a sponsored video, it's just a gift. Have reached out to me and have very, very kindly Tanya Kid Begs in Northern Ireland, Irish, woohoo! Stories Perfume was created to transport the mind and transform the emotions. And she reached out and her team reached out and they said they would love to gift me a perfume. They sent me two samples. I picked the one I love. I'm only ever gonna put something on my channel that I absolutely love. And this one spoke to me because of the notes inside in this beauty. This is the packaging it came in. And I just love the name of the brand, Stories, because it's all about memories and it's all about your childhood. And this actually really Really touched my heart because if a lot of you will know my granddad passed away last weekend and he was very close to us he was 98 so we had him around forever and I know some people would say well god he was 98 and he was a great age but the longer someone is in your life the more you just actually expect them to be there so sorry for rambling but this is why I love the, the sentiment first of this actual perfume wait till you hear this I picked the number two okay the reason I picked the number two were the notes and I'm going to tell you the notes now the notes inside are Bulgarian rose which you know I absolutely love. I have it in my Delina and different perfumes. Spice with ginger, cardamom, one of my favourites, green tea, honey tobacco, woody, which I love, opoponox, tonka bean, patchouli, enhance the full bodied perfume while amber and musk render it on forgettable. Now listen to this bit. Inspired by a grandfather's garden laden with childhood memories and succulent with the scent of the day. So it's all about the garden and my granddad absolutely adored, adored flowers. The universe is mad, right? The universe is mad, sorry. But it was really, really touching when I read that today. Thinking of my granddad today and his beautiful garden, he always told me I had no green fingers and I didn't have a clue how to, how to plant flowers. <laughs> so this is for him and now remind, will remind me of him forever. And it's the number two. They also have a number one, which is more light and crisp. Katie actually preferred the number one, but we have different tastes that way. So this is the beautiful packaging and I don't want to spend too long on this because we want to get into the handbags. I want to take her out. Very sturdy packaging altogether. And the delivery, my God, I selected the perfume yesterday and it was here today. Unbelievable. And I'm sure they ship all over the world. So let me see. Oh, just stunning. You can really smell that Bulgarian rose, the woody coming through and the undertones and the longer it stays, the green and the patchouli are very much in there as well. This is very, very much a me perfume. I got the 100 mil, which I love because you can travel with it, no problem. And thank you so much to Stories Perfume. Uh, it's a gift, as I said, thank you. And they also sent me a little hand and body lotion. Just so kind. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Now, sorting out our lives, ladies and gents, let's go. I have 10 points for you and I want you to stick around till the end because I have a resolution. I have different options options for different people out there because we ain't all the same, you know? Number one drawback of having the large down handbag collection is insurance. Nobody wants to talk about insurance, but it's important. And you know what's ironic? The people who actually need the insurance don't actually take out the insurance. Some people can get their handbags insured under their house contents if you have 100,000 or 200,000, whatever your insurance is, it might cover it. Others do not. Please, please, please do not skip this point. Yes, it's boring. None of us want to have to deal with insurance, but Please, just check it out. If you have a handbag collection, 20 grand plus, 10 grand plus, just check it out because we're all at risk. You just need to cover yourself, okay? That is the first downfall. Out of the way. Number two, it gets way better from here. Believe me. Number two is, of course, safety. Now, we are parading to the world, particularly when we're on social media and different points, what kind of a handbag collection, what we have, you know, oh yeah, here you go, blah, blah, blah. So, and that also increases the amount 
that we have to do before our holidays. And I know I do this for one because we are on social media or you might, you know, be showing your friends on social media, on Instagram or different things, your handbag collection. So for me, I like to gather my handbags. Sometimes I take them out of my house, store them somewhere else so that God forbid, if anything happens, the bags ain't not here. They ain't here. So just have a think about that. Have a think about your safety and security. The last thing you want is when you're going on holidays is to be worrying about your bloody handbags at home. Yeah, no one wants that. No. Oh no, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> you want your pina colada by the pool or whatever it is, your dry martini, whatever your tipple is. Number three, space and storage. Depending on the size of your house, depending on the size of your closet. Okay, we know some people have lovely walk-in wardrobes and closets and all the rest of it and you can fit however many handbags in there, but it's still not the point. You have to think of not only how much space you have or will they fit, but also when your handbags are in your collection, and how you store them. If you're pressing them up against each other, you have to think about color transfer. So there's this worry. If they're patent and if they're rubbing together, you have to think about stickiness and all that kind of stuff. And also you have to think about denting and scratching if they're a delicate kind of a material. So these are very important. Even with tweeds, they can kind of, the threads can pull. Sequins, the same, very delicate. Suede can rub up against each other. And as I said, patent. So just be careful about the storage and the space that you're going to put your handbags into. Number four, temperature. I've had this issue with some bags before, which I've received and I had to actually send back immediately, particularly from places like Florida, really hot places where basically humidity, you have to think of where you're storing your handbags. Is it too hot? Are my handbags going to basically melt? Now, leather doesn't melt, but it can get ruined if it's in a humid condition. The leather can crease. Leather can also look like it's, it's obviously not melting, but it can look like it's kind of melting. Air conditioned, you have to think about that if you're in a hot country. If you're in a colder country, you know, you're probably a bit luckier. I don't have to think about those things because we live in Ireland, so our temperature is pretty moderate, so it, it's fair enough, you know. But yes, you definitely have to think of that humidity and the moldy smell. If you leave it for too long in your wardrobe and you don't use it, you are going to get that moldy smell. And nobody wants a stinky bag. I don't want a stinky bag. Nobody wants a stinky bag. I actually didn't tell you that, guys this story, but I actually bought, it's gone back, right? I bought it a couple of months ago. I bought an Hermes Kelly 28, okay, off eBay. And it was a Courcheval and it was in a tan color and it was vintage. Now it was, in okay, it was in good condition. I mean, there wasn't too many, there was a few scratches on, but the smell of cigarette smoke on the inside of the bag was gut-wrenching, disgusting. I put everything inside, I kept it for a few days because I had gold hardware and it was the color gold and all the rest of it. And I said, no, I can, I can really, you know, I can spruce this up. And there was just no way, there was just no way. The smell was going nowhere. So you do not want your bags to start smelling, so just be careful. You will not be able to sell them and that is just a nightmare. Number five, lighting. Even in this room in my studio that we're in at the moment, lighting wise, it has to be bright obviously for lighting, but then I keep a lot of my perfumes in here and you have to be very, very careful with perfumes because they go off in the light. So I like to keep my perfumes and my delicate handbags in the dark where there will be no fading, where my perfumes will not go off. Yeah, definitely for handbags, it's the fading. You do not, particularly with Louis Vuitton. If you want the fachetta to go darker, absolutely put it in a window, but any kind of bags, you don't want them to fade. That's the last thing you want them to do. And they actually do. My vintage red Chanel actually has two slightly different color reds as you lift up the, the flap. Completely natural for a 30 year old bag. But you don't want your five, four, three, two year old bag to fade in a window and just get absolutely ruined. So this is another reason not to have a massive handbag collection and think about carefully where you're gonna place them, how you're gonna put them in your home. These are very important points that we don't think about when we're in the uh, fancy shop and we're kind of going, do you know what, that's lovely. It's shiny and sparkly. Yeah, in those conditions, it's just beautiful. Why don't you go home and put it in a glass case, shine a light on it and leave it there and that'll be it and sure it'll be just like having it in the shop. <laughs> Coffee! <laughs> now, number six. Oh, jeeps. Who is guilty of this one? Who? Put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. I know I am. Packaging. Packaging everywhere. Packaging. Storing packaging. Of course, you've all, you know, over the years, people like to, if they're if you're reselling particularly, they like to get the packaging and the receipts and the full set, as they call it, the dust bag, everything inside the authenticity card. So that's why sometimes we hold on to packaging. But oh my God, after a few handbags, it gets wearing. You know, it really does, it really does. Like you've got like six, seven, eight, nine empty Louis Vuitton boxes inside and a few five or six Chanel, seven Chanel boxes sitting inside. Doing what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. 
taking up space. So just be careful of your packaging. Take all these things into account when you're trying to curate your perfect number of handbags so you can lead a stress-free, simple, elegant life without just too much stuff. Taking up space, not only physically, but mentally, everywhere, you know? So, number seven is total cost. What do I mean by total cost? Total cost is if you go in and you add up all the handbags that you have and you kind of go, right, oh my God, that was that, that was that. And say they come to 20 and 50, 100, 200, whatever it comes to, you can turn around and go, what was your, you know, opportunity cost for that handbag or the total cost? You could have done up your kitchen. You could have bought a car. You could have went on holidays. Now, you might be in a situation that you can still do all of those things and that's brilliant. I'm just saying for some people, you might look and you might go, God, and it kind of gets harder to justify the amount of handbags once the, the number keeps going up and you realize what you could have or can or invested or whatever done with that money. So it is also something just to keep note of. Now, number eight, enjoying what we already have. Now, I really actually have found this in the past and I've said this to my lovely subscribers, you guys. And if you're not a subscriber, by the way, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell because it really helps us. Thank you. So I've said it to you guys before, particularly my OGs would know this one. I really want to enjoy my bag. I mean, it takes us a long time to get where we are with our collections and a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of scrolling, a lot of research. So I want to enjoy every single piece. And I just find that if you have a large handbag collection, it's actually kind of impossible to enjoy each piece. Really, really enjoy it and savor it because you're rushing on to the next piece and you're, you're looking for the next hit and the next item, the next new thing and the next trend. And you're not already enjoying. It's like you've opened up your bag, you've got the hit, you've got the adrenaline rush and the dopamine of oh my god it's beautiful I love the packaging I love how the bag opens I love how new and shiny it is and then a few weeks later it's just sitting there so I think it's really important to take a step back and really be grateful that oh my god and, and never forget how appreciative and lucky we are to be in this position because not a lot of people are so I think it's important to step back and really think about that not to move too fast enjoy what you have rotate them and you're getting that novelty feeling every time because it kind of dwindles over time and that brings me on to number nine, buying and selling of your bags and regrets. So be careful in the buying, as I just said, because then if you want to turn around and sell your bags, it is not an easy process, as a lot of people will tell you. I've said this before. It can be great if you get the right client, and but it's still not easy. You're going to the post office, you have to take pictures, you have to wrap it up, you have to converse and communicate with, this, with the buyer, you have to send it off, you have to make sure it gets there safely, please God that nothing happens. And it's not easy, you know? So if you're mindful and you keep your curation to a little bit more of a curated collection well then it'll simplify things that brings me on to regrets another reason why it's hard to sell your bag because we are all afraid of regrets i have had a girl on today my bag might be gone by the next time or by the time you actually see this video i am in a conversation with a subscriber today who wants to buy my mini black chanel i had a couple of lovely subscribers on and i wasn't ready to sell it like i know i said it in my last video but i wasn't ready fully 100 percent. i had the guilt of not using it i have the guilt of not using the red a lot of you said do not sell the red chanel so i was like okay take your advice then the black mini i was like i have another mini but i do love the hardware and that one plus Katie had shown interest in it so I was like oh what am I going to do what am I going to do and then this subscriber she made an offer I said look I'm going to have to ask for a premium price because I really wasn't sure about letting it go so she kindly well not yet it's not fully kind of decided yet but we're in the process of and she's kind of made an offer and I'm kind of thinking about it so the reason I am saying this is because I do not want to have any regrets I brought that bag to Paris and I did actually wear it a lot and I don't want it to be a case of oh my god I'm really sorry I sold that bag whether Katie wants it or what if I use it more in the future or I miss because it's a vint it's not vint quite vintage yet but it's and it's, it's a beautiful lambskin bag and what if I want to wear it or something so these are all the things you think about and the more you have a bigger collection you have to think about that with each of your bags that you're thinking of selling or letting go and you're hesitating but in my head I'm like well, let's give it a new life that somebody will wear it more often than I am and trying to justify it that way so watch this space I'll let you know what happens with this one the next point is excitement 
of shopping. So the excitement of shopping is brilliant for a few years and it's great and once you've earned that money and you get to that level where you can afford the bag because years and years and years ago when you were fawning over this bag and lusting over this bag and dreaming about this bag when you were in your early 20s say when you're or teens when you're in college or just out of college starting work and you couldn't afford the bag now you can afford it and it's like oh my god but once you've bought the bag there's nothing like the first time it's nothing like the first kiss nothing like the first bag nothing like the first of anything and you're like oh wow like my Chanel 19 in the caramel that bag and my Hermes Birkin 25 like whoa so nothing like that and but you cannot get that it's like a drug addict you cannot get that feeling again and again and again it wears off after a while once you've reached that time in your life that goal that pinnacle where else is there to go so that's just something to be aware of and know then that you have to arrive at a place where you're content and that you're not going to keep selling bags for a new one and chasing that feeling because you will end up exhausted and losing a lot of money now the resolution and how many bags is the perfect number for you well i looked up this and there was a couple of surveys done a little bit of research done online and there wasn't the exact but there was a few different numbers that were thrown around that might be helpful to you so the first one the optimum number of handbags for say one person might be three this could be you if you're a minimalist if you are at a certain stage of your life if you're traveling if you're a student if you don't have the money this could be the number for you if you just like a stress-free life number three and the three bags that have been quoted and thrown around in the top three here are if you have a tote if you have a crossbody or medium size bag whichever is your preference doesn't have to be crossbody could be shoulder but crossbody or medium size and the third one is an evening bag so that gives you three choices and probably in neutral colors if you go for blacks whites beige tan greys you will find it very very easy to match these with pretty much all of your wardrobe unless you're a real colorful person which we'll get to in a minute number two is five some people like to have the perfect number is five handbags so it'll be the first three that i just mentioned the tote the medium size stroke crossbody the evening bag and then on top of that number four would be a larger crossbody and a sports or travel bag for number five that gives you a little bit more choice a little bit more freedom and you're kind of covered on all occasions then we will move to the third one which between eight and nine bags I think this one was really really popular really common among a lot of people and the reason for the nine is that well basically if you know you still can have you know you still have a lot of space that you can hold nine bags and you don't need too much space also it gives you a lot of variety and so if you want pops of color in your wardrobe or you want different bags whether it be sequins or suede the pop of color being red or blue or or green or orange that nine can give you that little bit more freedom also gives you the choice you've got your five core bags so you can play with four more and your as I said occasion bags pops of color I think nine is an actual really really good number my sweet spot sweet spot I feel is 15 I've said this before I have had and I've come down from I'm really really proud of this I have to say I have had 37 bags when I started this channel 37 I had 37 bags when I started this channel and I have have literally downsized to now having 23 bags which I think for me and they're quality over quantity they're really 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 special pieces and I'm so chuffed with them that I'm decluttering all the time but my quality is going up the quantity might be going down and Isabel style helped me out she's such a doe she was doing her video series at the time looking at our collections and seeing what asking you guys what you think should go and what you sh think should say stay so i sold it off from that now i'm down to 23 and as i said my ideal number is in and around the 15 so watch this space and i just think because at that point you can sort of use them all on a regular basis any more than 15 you're never going to be able to use them on a regular basis they're going to sit there looking at you they're going to age and they're going to get damaged anyway and spoiled maybe so it's just something just to be a little bit more carefree and also enjoy exactly what i have in my collection leaving you with my last tip is buy quality over quantity and buy what you love because i've said this before your head can rule your heart but your heart knows what it wants so i hope this has helped you let me know how many bags you have in your collection and if you're thinking of downsizing any if you want any help let me know we can do a video series on that and we can all help each other out and what bags to let go what bags to keep let's do that that could be fun and until next time be kind be safe and be compassionate and thank you so much for all your messages in the past few days love you lots Mwah. <laughs>